Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters. This is it. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> You got the time, Chester? Why, Mr. Dillon? Why? Well, I'd just like to know what time it is, that's all. Well, yes, sir, I figured that. But I wondered how important it is. Well, it isn't this important, Chester, believe me. Well, see, if it was, I could run over to Mr. Hightower's and find Mr. out. Mr. Hightower? Yes, sir. His watch broke down and he sent it to St. Louis to get fixed, so i give him the loan of mine. But I can still go in and look at it whenever I need to. Oh, well, that's a very good arrangement, Chester. Yes, sir. I figured time's a whole lot more important to a man like him than it is to me. It ain't but seldom it matters none one way or the other where I'm concerned. You understand? Oh, I surely do. Yes, I do. I understand, Chester. Yeah. Why did you want to know, Mr. Dillon? I mean, about what time... You're making me sorry I asked, Chester, but I'm supposed to meet a man at the Dodge House at 2 o'clock. Oh, well, it ain't nowhere near 2 o'clock yet. Well, how do you know? The sun. It lacks 15 minutes of being 2 o'clock. Chester. Yes, sir? Why don't you sell that watch to Mr. Hightower? Oh, I wouldn't want to sell that watch. My Uncle Arthur gave me that watch, Mr. Dillon. He got it from a fellow on the... Now, get out and stay out. Don't you come back in this store ever again. Mr. Jonas. Well, lay off. Lay off. Don't talk back to me now. Now, just get. What's that Indian kid up to now? I told you he's not an Indian. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Oh, look at him go. He ain't waiting for nobody. Look, Chester, there'll be a man called Davis waiting for me at the Dodge House. Will you go tell him I'll be along directly? Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Marshal. For a minute there, I thought it was that Indian kid back. He ran on down the street, Mr. Jonas. You ought to do something about him, Marshal. Oh, why? Well, you heard about them Cheyenne busting out of Fort Dodge yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, I heard. Well, wait till they massacre some people around here. Then what'll folks think of that boy running loose? Why should they think anything? He's an Indian, ain't he? He's a Cheyenne. No. His name's Cullen and he's white. The army found him with them Indians, didn't they? The Indians stole him from Miss Cullen eight years ago down on the Medicine River. You know that. I don't know it. Now, I hear it ain't her kid at all. He sure don't look like her. Why did you throw him out of here, Mr. Jonas? He was trying to buy ammunition for his sharp's rifle. What? Said Miss Cullen. Well, now, you know that's a lie. I'm telling you, Marshal, what with them Cheyenne loose, it ain't safe having a boy like that around. You ought to lock him up. He's not supplying the Cheyenne, Jonas, and don't worry about them. Colonel Honeyman's got two troops out after him. Hmm. You'll never catch him again. And I mean it about that boy, Marshal. You better lock him up before somebody knocks his brains out. There's a lot of talk about him. Well, I don't want to hear any more of it. That boy's got a hard enough time ahead of him as it is. Uh, Mr. Dillon? 
Yeah, what, Chester? That Indian kid, he's starting a fight with some man. What? Yes, sir. Right in front of the Dodge house. And Mr. Dillon, that little boy's got a knife as long as his arm. <laughs> I never seen him before, but I hear he's been plaguing that boy lately. So the boy came looking for him with a knife, huh? Hey, that man's got a knife out now. All right, hold it, mister. Right. Let him alone, Will Marshal. You get out of my way, please. Move aside there. All right, drop the knife, mister. Not hardly. Drop it. No. His kid's been asking for it. He started this. What's the matter with you fighting a boy? Dirty little savage. Grab the boy, Chester. That's where I got him. All right, drop the knife, mister. He cut me. You saw him. I'll open him up like a melon. No, you won't. What's the matter with you, Marshal? I'll keep this knife. And if you're hurt so bad, go see Doc. You're going to wish you hadn't mixed in this. Am I? All right, I'll take the boy's knife, Chester. Here he is. All right, son. You come with me. I'm going to take you home before you kill somebody. This is it, L&M filters, it stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor, L&M's got everything, it's the best. No other cigarette gives you L&M's assurance, assurance that it is best. L&M's got everything, superior filter, superior taste, superior filtration, because of L&M's superior filter, white. All white, pure white, the purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste, because of l and M superior tobaccos. Tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. Buy l and M today, America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it, l and M filters. l and has got everything. It's the best. Want to talk about it, son? Name Viho Khan. Viho Khan, huh? Uh, does that mean something, the Cheyenne? It mean white boy. Oh, I see. Well, uh, Viho Khan, you want to tell me why you fought that man? Man talk bad to me. Hit me in mouth, kick me. Different man give me big knife. Then I fight. You stop or I'll kill him. Make big coup. You're not a brave, Viokan. You're not an Indian. You're white. You gotta remember that. Viho Khan have many Indian brothers. Ah, but you're home now. You're living among white men. You have a white mother. And you gotta stop thinking like an Indian or you're gonna get into real trouble. Mrs. Cullen talk hard at Viho Khan for fight. You no understand. Ah, oh, she'll understand, all right. That's why I came home with you. Now, let's go in and I'll tell her that it wasn't your fault. That you, Dennis? Where have you been? Oh, Marshal Dillon. Come in. Hello, Miss Cullen. You came home with Dennis? Name Viho Khan. No, Dennis. Please, Dennis. Let's don't argue that now. And look at you. Where are your shoes? Nowhere shoes. Your shirt. I've made you such nice shirts. You can't run around in nothing but a pair of pants. Oh, you'll be the death of me yet, Marshal. 
No do harm to you. Oh, I know that, Dennis. You just don't understand yet, do you? You go to your room now and put on those shoes the soldiers give you. And a shirt, too. A nice blue shirt, hmm? I go. And take that arrow point out of your hair. Sit down, Marshal. Oh, thank you, ma'am. It's not easy. A woman of 40, a widow, raising a boy like that. No, ma'am, I know. But I want to. I've got to. What? What do you mean, Miss Cullen? He's a white boy. Anybody can see that. But he isn't mine, Marshal. What? I knew he wasn't the first day I went to Fort Dodge to see him. He's not my son. But he's the same age, and I give him the same name, and I treat him just like he was. No, he won't suffer for lack of a mother's love. I promise that. I'm sure he won't, ma'am. Why did you bring him home, Marshal? Uh, you heard about the Cheyennes, the band he was taken with. They'd broken out of Fort Dodge. Well, the boys heard it too, Miss Cullen. Why do you say that? <laughs> Man, you own a sharps rifle. Well, yes. It was Mr. Collins. The very one he died fighting with on the Medicine River. But why? Well, Dennis tried to buy ammunition for it today. What? Mr. Jonas thinks he's planning to help those Indians. But how? What could he do? I don't know. But until they're rounded up again, a lot of people in Dodge are going to be pretty jumpy. Some of them have already caused trouble for the boy. They have. He got into a fight with a grown man today. And he cut him up some. Oh, no. It wasn't his fault, Miss Cullen, but well, that's the sort of thing that can happen more and more. If you're saying I should give him up, I won't. Uh, no, ma'am. I... He needs his own people. He needs a mother, just like my own boy needs one. If he's still alive somewhere. All I'm saying, ma'am, is that you got to keep him here at the house till that scare about the Cheyenne is over. If you let him run around town, I'm, I'm going to have to lock him up for his own protection. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Huh? Oh, that's Chester. Come in, Chester. Thank you. Why, Colonel Honeyman. I'm sorry to intrude, ma'am. Hello, Marshal. Colonel. I, uh, I'd like to talk to the boy, Mrs. Cullen. Talk to him? Oh, is there something wrong, Colonel? <clears throat> you know who Little Wolf is? Uh, he's chief of the Cheyenne on the Darlington Reservation, isn't he? They were, Darlington. I just had word they've broken out and are headed this way. Three hundred of them. Oh, I see. Obviously, they're coming to meet the Indians who escaped Fort Dodge yesterday. What does this have to do with you wanting to talk to Dennis, Colonel? I want him to tell me where their point of rendezvous is. How would Dennis know? Well, Indians scatter when they're being pursued, Mrs. Cullen. They secretly regroup at a given point later, and every man, woman, and child of them knows well in advance where that point is. But Dennis isn't... I'll call him. Dennis. Dennis. You call V. O'Conn? Please, son. It's Dennis now. Come in here. Colonel Hunneman wants to talk to you. <coughs> uh, hello. Hello, boy. Soldier? Want to talk with me? Uh, uh yes. Uh, tell me, uh, do you know Little Wolf? Little Wolf Chief. Good Chief. Well, uh, he, he was, maybe, but he, he's done a bad thing now. No. He left reservation. He's going to join Long Knife. Long Knife, my chief. Dennis, don't say that. Let him talk, Ms. Cullen. Long Knife escape. Yes. He and the others you were with burned their barracks at Fort Dodge and killed three soldiers. Fijo can know. Well, I'm sure you do. And you also know where Long Knife is meeting Little Wolf and his people. If, 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 if you tell me, you'll save lives, Vihokan. 
Not only of those soldiers, but of, of those of your people, too. Colonel. Please, Miss Cullen. Tell me, Viho Khan. Dennis not no meeting place. Well, you can't beat it out of him, Colonel. No. Well, I'm sorry to have bothered you, Mrs. Cullen. Goodbye. I'll go with you, Colonel. Uh, Miss Cullen, uh, will you remember what I said? I'll keep an eye on him, Marshal. Fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Miss Cullen. Chester. That was a waste of time. Well, what are your plans now, Colonel? Plans? Marshal, I was down to half strength when Long Knife broke out. And now, with two troops after him, I haven't enough men left for the post-fatigue detachments, let alone to scout the country. Now, uh, you uh, want civilian help? No, no. It'd only end in a massacre of some kind. So I'll have to do the best I can. Well... Good luck. Yeah. Oh, that boy could have helped. Hey, you better keep a close watch on him, Marshal. All right, let's get back to the fort, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? I've been thinking... If the army had left them Indians alone in the first place, they wouldn't be in all this trouble. Yeah. But that's not for us to decide. All right, let's go. Kitty, mm. how about you? More coffee? Uh, no, thanks, Doc. Uh, you, Matt? Yeah, I think I'll have some, Doc. Just a little. Good, good. Uh, you know, that coffee's three parts chicory and one part lye. <laughs> and that's why it needs a little cream, Kitty. It softens it a bit. <laughs> kind of hard on the cream. <laughs> yeah, we should have gone up to my office. I'd have made us some real coffee. Oh, why didn't you ask us up to supper, Doc? Oh, so I said coffee, not a whole meal. <laughs> oh, I'd have cooked it, Doc. Oh, you on that stove of mine, you would have. Yeah. Do you know I learned to cook on an open fire? You did? Not out in the prairie, in a fireplace. We couldn't afford a stove. In fact, we couldn't afford much of anything we couldn't pick up off the ground. <laughs> well, you're rich now. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, Marshal. Oh, now, Miss nice. Collins. What's the trouble? He's gone, Marshal. What? Dennis. Dennis, he's gone. Well, what? gone where? I don't know. Well, where did you see him last? After supper. We ate early, and then I had a talk with him. I told him how much I love him and, and how I need him. And then I told him about how people in Dodge feel right now. And until things change, he'd have to stay at home. Well, he didn't say much, but he went to his room, and I sat out on the porch for a while. Then I heard a noise out back. And when I looked, he was gone. Well, maybe he's just wandering around somewhere. No. He's gone. Well, how do you know? That arrow point he always wants to tie in his hair. He took that, Marshal. So? That is no. He took his horse, too. He's gone to join the Cheyenne, Marshal. And you've got to go after him. Right now. <laughs> Other cigarette gives you L and M's assurance, assurance that it is best. L and M gives you superior filtration because of its superior filter, superior taste because of L and M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L and M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L and M superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white, all white. Truly the miracle tip 
because when it's added to L M superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. No other cigarette gives you L and M's assurance, assurance that it is best. L and M's got everything: superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L and M today. There was no way to pick up the boy's trail that night, but next morning Chester and I rode out after him. We tracked him all that day, all the next, southeast into the Gypsum Hills country. The land was different down there, dotted with buttes and cut by narrow, winding canyons. This was ambush country, and ideal for what Colonel Honeyman called a rendezvous point. We traveled slowly, eyes open, ready for trouble. And then finally, the trail led down into a rocky canyon. And at the bottom, we found the boy crouched over a small fire. He acts like he's waiting for us, Mr. Dillon. I wish he'd waited somewhere more open. I don't like being boxed up down here. I got kind of a spooky feeling, too. Yeah. Let's leave him here, Chester. All right, sure. Marshal, make long ride. Catch Vihok Khan. Well, you travel fast, son. White lady send Marshal. Miss Cullen's mighty worried about you. Soldier. He worried, too? Now, Colonel Honeyman didn't send me. He follow? No, he didn't follow. Siloho, Niyava! What's he yelling about? Look over there, Chester. Over what? Oh, my goodness. Indians. Why, there must be 20 of them. Don't move. Oh, I ain't about to. Yeah, they're warriors. Every one of them. My name, Little Wolf. That's the chief Colonel Honeyman said was meeting him in Cheyenne that busted out of Fort Dodge. Yeah, and the boy knew where they were meeting all the time. You tell Vihokan soldiers not follow. The soldiers are hunting for you, Little Wolf, but they're not with us. Daish Lai, Naya. Vihokan say... Little Wolf can believe, Marshal. You can believe me. We came alone. We came to take the boy back home. We who can no like life with white man. Well, he'll get used to it. He belongs with his own people, Little Wolf. Little Wolf say all men free. We who can must make own choice. He's too young. He doesn't know what's best for him. If he make mistake... His mistake. Boy never become man. Other people make choice for him. Little Wolf, this boy's not an Indian. He's white. And if he stays with you and Long Knife, you know what'll happen to him. He live like Indian. He'll die like an Indian, too. The soldiers are after you, and sooner or later they'll find you. And when they do, there'll be a big battle, and many of your people will die. Perhaps the boy will die with them. Viho Khan not afraid. You're white, Viho Khan. You're not an Indian. This is not your fight. White people treat Viho Khan bad. Kick, beat, call names. Mrs. Khan no understand Viho Khan. Nobody understand. Well, it takes time, Viho Khan. Boy, decide. You want to come with Cheyenne, you no stop. We'd have a hard time, two against twenty. If you fight, we kill you. Look, son. Before you decide, 
You remember, these Indians are poorly armed. Probably a lot of them are sick. When winter comes, many will die. And the soldiers will get to rest. Soldier not like Indian. Soldier get tired. Go back. Indian go north. Powder River home. Hunt. Fish again. White people not my people. Fijo Khan stay with Indian. Fijo Khan decide. Leave now. Maybe someday come back. Great chief. Not with the army chasing you. Medicine River, Vijo Khan. The other. Uva. Did you hear what he said? Yeah. Medicine River, Vijo Khan. Medicine River, white boy. Ain't that where Ms. Cullen lost her son? Yeah. Then he is her boy after all. And she didn't recognize him. He must have changed a lot. You gonna tell her? No, Chester. No. I'm not gonna tell her. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know what I like about L&Ms is they're mild and mighty easy on the draw. When you get right down to it, no filter stacks up with L&Ms pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Darn good smoke. See for yourself. L&M stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Sammy Ogg, Virginia Gregg, Joseph Kearns, Harry Bartell, John Daner, and Ralph Moody. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. best for you, they satisfy you. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today, smoother, cooler, best for you. Remember, listen to Gunsmoke again on radio next week for another transcribed story of the western frontier when Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke, brought to you by L&M Filters.